Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and Friends, reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ, raising up Jesus believers throughout New England, the nation, Canada, and the world. And now our pastor, E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sense of hope that God will use this program and use us right now <clears throat> as an instrument to minister to and ease. And I'm certain that God is going to do just that. We have a word that we're going to share with you today. I'm sure we do. As a matter of fact, we have several things that we need to share with you today. We, we haven't been in the studio for a couple of weeks. You know, we had uh, some holidays, 4th of July, and different holidays went by, and then people went on vacation, and different things were happening, and so on. You know, during the summer, summer months, it can be a little more, a little busier than, a little busier than usual with weddings and different events going on and all. But, but I tell you what, we're here. And we're just going to let the Holy Spirit have his way. I, I, as we taped the hour program, I mentioned some of the words that we weren't able to record in the studio. Maybe we'll come back and do some of those later on. So maybe we'll just try to give you a little gumbo, all right, a little gumbo word today. Just throw a little bit of everything in there. But whatever it is, God gets the glory, and I pray uh, you're edified and encouraged in some way. Go to our website, eiosborne.org. That's O-S-B-O-R-N-E, okay? E-I-O-S-B-O-R-N-E is the website address. You'll find the times, locations of services, and so on. And I tell you what, we have a couple of books on there. We have some DVDs on there. But there's a book especially that I wrote called Now Are We the Sons of God? And it may not be on the website as of now, it should have been. I'm going to make sure it's on there, hopefully by the time you see this program. And if you see this program and you uh, uh, send me an email or write us, email or write us, email or write us, I'll send you a copy of that book free, okay? If you, if you email or write. And I'm only going to do that for maybe the first 15 people, okay? Email or write us, 15 people email or write. I can't just do it blank, open, you know, just whatever, unlimited. Uh, but we'll do the best we can. I'd like you to have that, okay? Also, you can call the information prayer line at 508-746-4085 if you have a prayer request, comment, question, and so on, or correspond with us by mail at the time is now, Post Office Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 0236 one okay <clears throat> i apologize if i cough up every every now and then i hope it doesn't disturb you too much but something's going on but I, with the strap of jesus we're healed right now so let's pray father thank you to, for this opportunity to minister to those that you would have listening and watching today i pray that your name is glorified and your people are edified move right now in a mighty miraculous spectacular way let your glory oh god not only fill this the studio right now and your presence be here with us, but let it fill every house, every car, you know, every room where the people, where someone may be watching and listening to us right now. Glorify your name, heal your people, and for everyone, anyone who may be sick or suffering or afflicted with any disease, sickness, weakness, or problem, I pray for them right now and I speak healing to you in the name of Jesus. You sent your word and healed them. We send the word of healing to you right now. I feel especially to pray for those who, are, who have cancer. Lord, so many people, cancer seems to be like it's like an uh, epidemic type of a rate where so many people are suffering with all different types. Everything seems to be called cancer nowadays. You got a toothache, it's cancer. But Lord, we have a name. Oh, you've given us a name. You've given us a name that we can use that that's above every name that may be named. Everything that has a name, we have a name that's greater. It is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak that name over every person who's been diagnosed with cancer. I speak the name of Jesus over you and over that sickness, that disease, that cancer in your body, and I command it to go. Every cancer cell be gone right now in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and I thank you, Lord, for healing your people in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, on Sunday, um, we talked about something that so many people, I, I don't know why people do this, but we do, worry. Now, we've talked about worrying before, we, and we've dealt with all that and so on. So before I get into that, let me just tell you this. 
A few weeks ago, we ministered this word. Someone right now is, is, is in a situation, maybe in your marriage, possibly in your business, someone else maybe with a child or children, and you just don't know what to do. Uh, maybe someone else is being, uh, 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 you have a, like a job offer type of a thing, and um, you're, you're not sure whether you should relocate and so on. Here's, here's, the, here's the bottom line. When you don't know what to do, stop. That's the word the Lord gave me, stop. You know, if you're traveling and you're lost and you keep going, you could find yourself so much further out of the way and having to make up time and distance and all that. So the best thing to do is what? Stop. When you don't know what to do, the Lord said, stop. Now here's what stop is as, as an acronym. Children of Israel were in the, uh, uh, being confronted with this army that had uh, come together against them to wipe them out. They go to Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, we're outnumbered. You're going to be wiped out. What did he do? He, he set himself, they set themselves to seek the Lord. Second Chronicles 20. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I, I'm just telling you, I don't have time to read all these scriptures. So what happens? They begin to pray. So, and after they pray, the word of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord comes upon Jehaziel and he begins to give a word, instruction and so on. They praised God for that word. Then they obeyed that word and they praised him for the victory in advance. So here's the, here's the, here's the little thing the Lord gave me about this when you don't know what to do because someone right now isn't sure what to do. Listen, if you're in a marital situation, you're not sure what to do, stop. Stop talking. Stop giving your opinion. Stop running. Because you might think you got to say something, give your opinion. I'm going to speak my mind. Okay. And you're just going to make things worse. Stop. You're having a problem with your children. You just feel you got to listen. Shh. Stop. Sierra La Boca, close your mouth. Okay. <laughs> you, you have a problem with your boss or someone on your job. Stop. All right. What is stop? S. Seek the Lord. And after you seek the Lord, just like Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel in 2 Chronicles 20, what's going to happen? God's going to give an answer. Spirit of the Lord will come on Jehaziel, your cousin, on you, whatever. But a word is going to come. What do you do? Thank him for that word. So you stop. S. T. Thank him for that word. Then what do you do? Obey. Whatever the instruction, direction God has given you, obey that instruction. And then like the children of Israel, they set that choir, went out into battle, what? Singing and praising God. And they praised and God gave them the victory supernaturally. They didn't even have to fight. They went out and found all these dead bodies. And they were three days, the Bible says, in collecting the spoils. But the first thing they did when they got the news that the Amorites, Malachites, children of the East, children of the Mount Seir, all these people had, had come together in allegiance to wipe them out was what? They stopped. They stopped everything. Everybody was fasting. The animals were fasting. And what were they doing? Seeking the Lord. Right? Well, of course, when you seek the Lord, he says, hey, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. He shall. So when you seek him, he said, if you seek me, you'll find me. You seek him, the answer is going to come. Right? So once the answer comes, you thank him for the answer. So you stop. You seek him. S. You thank him once the answer comes. Now you obey the instruction, O, and P, you praise him even in advance, even by faith, because you know you have the victory. Stop, all right? Now, the next thing is, the other thing you do is stop worrying. In Matthew chapter 6, in Philippians chapter 4, <clears throat> maybe we'll go there, I think I'll make time for that. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, be anxious, be, I'm sorry, be careful for nothing anxious, worried about anything. I don't care how terrible you might think it is. Don't worry about it. Instead, but in everything, instead, here's what you do. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So instead of being worried and anxious and all that, pray. I can tell you from experience, whenever I've prayed about something, I always feel better after I pray. Okay? So pray about it. Make your petitions to God and then give him thanks. And it says, what's going to happen after that? And the peace of God, okay? What happens as a result of your praying, requesting, and thanking God, here's what happens. I can tell you from experience, it's just, it's true. The peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds uh, uh, through Christ Jesus. Then it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are uh, honest and, and, and just, whatsoever things are uh, lovely, whatsoever things are uh, of a good report, it tells you, think on these things, change the way you think. And we talked about that as well. See, God can't do much with a person until he changes their mind. You know, 
We have this thing in this country called uh, the prison, prison system, penal system, whatever you want to call it. The whole purpose of that is to rehabilitate people, okay? And what is that all about? You know, yes, I, I know people go to prison and they go in there at 90-pound weakling and come out looking like the Incredible Hulk. Well, guess what? They weren't sent in there to get physical rehabilitation, although that does happen. They have nothing but time on their hands and they do a lot of push-ups or whatever to get strong so they come out looking like the Hulk. Well, that, they didn't go in for physical rehabilitation. And, and, and so, right? And, and many times people go to prison and they find Jesus or uh, some Allah. They, they, get, they find some kind of religion or something or whatever. So they get some type of spiritual rehabilitation, right? But that's not why we sent them there either. What we sent them there for was for really mental rehabilitation, to change the way they think about committing crime and breaking the law, all right? They may have thought it was all right. They may have thought it was a good way to make money, fast money, to get rich quick and so on, you know, uh, uh, rich, get rich and die, whatever it is. But here's the thing. They go, to their, they go there to be rehabilitated. I think of church as spiritual rehabilitation. See, when you first get saved, you don't know Jesus, you don't know God, you don't know anything about the word and so on. So you need to be rehabilitated spiritually. So that's why you go to church, read your Bible and so on. You're transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. And God has to change your mind the way you think about a lot of things. The reason people worry is because the, their thinking process is all screwed up, okay? So in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, take no thought. Literal translation is don't worry. Again, dealing with anxiety and worry and so on. So he says, therefore I say unto you, verse 25, Matthew 6, take no thought for your life which, or, or, or what you shall eat or what you shall drink or, or yet for, you know yet for your body what you shall put on. So he says, stop worrying about life and all of the issues and things in life, your job, your career, all these, whatever the issues are in life, stop worrying about them. And he says, uh, 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 for your life, for uh, what you shall eat, and we're going to have enough food. What's going to happen to the water? Oh, what if, what if some terrorists act? Uh, all these different things, right? You think about, you worry about, for, for your drink, your body, clothes. He says, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? What, what he's saying is this, life is more important than the body. Uh, more, life, I'm sorry, he says, is the life more than meat, okay? Life is more important than food, and he says, and the body than raiment. The body is more important, the most important thing, than the clothing, the raiment you put on it. So if God has given you life, it only stands to reason he's going to give you the oxygen, the water, the food, and everything you need, the shelter to sustain life. It would be foolish to give you life and no food, no water, no oxygen, and so on. It'd be foolish. All right? And then the raiment. The body is more important. God has given you the most important thing. So put it in perspective. If God has given you life and he's given you a body, obviously he's going to give you some clothes, some shelter, food, and so on. So, why, so listen, why even worry about those things? And, what he, and, and the picture he gives us, the, the, the analogy he uses is the birds. Behold the fowls of the air. He says they don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather into barns. But he says your father feedeth them. Your father is feeding and taking care of his creation. You are his child. The birds are his creation. He's taking care of them. And listen, I don't think they worry. I really don't. I don't think they. And you know, he, 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 God calls us Father. We, we approach him, the Lord's Prayer, our Father. He calls himself, he calls himself our Father. And he says that's the way we approach him. Abba Father, our Father, which art in heaven. He has adopted us. We are his children. We've received the spirit of adoption. So he's our Father. He's not our creation. And Jesus goes on to say, are we not much better than they? Aren't we better than the creation and so on? He, he didn't, he's never said he's a father to the birds. He's their creator. He never said he adopted, has given the spirit of adoption to a bird or, or, or a cow or a giraffe or something. But he's given us the spirit of, of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He has adopted us. Now are we the sons of God. Okay? And so think about it. You know, if you have children, do you think it, your children, most children are not going to bed worried about what's going to be, unless they want some, a certain thing, whatever. They're not worried. They don't even wonder how you get the money to pay for the food. They go into Walmart with you, these stores, stop and shop, shops, whatever. Guess what? They, they're crying for things on the shelf. They want this kind of drink. They want a certain candy. They want some something or whatever. And they're crying. They have no understanding at all of the job that you go to every day or whatever you're doing to make the money 
to be able to buy the things to feed them. They don't even understand that at all. All they know is they want it, and, and, and all they know is when they want something, if they cry long enough, you're going to give it to them. Okay? That's what they know. And they trust that system. Okay? <laughs> They're trusting that cry, I get what I want system. It works in your house. Doesn't work in my house, but that works now. So here's the thing. These children, see, God calls us his children. And listen, you need to have at least, you need to have, I need to have, we need to have at least as much faith in God, our Heavenly Father, as your children have in you. As your children have in you. Have you ever been in, in a place, in a store, or somewhere, in church, or somewhere, and you know, people are around that your children don't know? You know what your children do? They kind of cling to you. You kind of want them to get away from you, get off me, you're making me hot, right? But they cling to you. Here comes some stranger, whatever, like my little nieces and nephews, they run and they get next to their mother and they lean on their leg and they hold their legs, little three-year-olds, whatever, and they're holding their leg and they cling to their leg. Why? Because they trust you. You are their place of safety, all right? They know you're not going to let anything happen to them. You and I, we need to have at least, come on now, at least as much faith and our Heavenly Father, as our children have in us, to take care of them, to supply the need. They're not worrying about the mortgage. You think your children know anything about a mortgage? You think your children know anything about rent or a car note? All they know is they get in the car, they go where they want. You go, you stop and get gas. They don't know how you do all that. They see you pull out a little plastic card, stick it in the thing. Man, that's a magical plastic card. Mom and dad get everything from the store with this little plastic card. I want one of those. That's all they know. They don't know what about a bill, the, 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 the credit card bill. They don't know anything about a debit card and that's coming off of your bank account. They know they see you pull out that plastic card and you got them an ice cream. You got them a burger from Burger King. You got everything they need from a little <laughs> from, from a plastic card in your wallet. The magical plastic card. That's all they know. But they're trusting you to give them to supply their need. Listen to this, according to your riches and according to your riches in your house, not in glory, but your house. But there's some, they trust you to do that, okay? They trust you that there's gonna be some breakfast, some ego, Lego my egos. They trust you that there's gonna be some something to drink or whatever, some clothes when they need it and so on, right? And you do that, you do a good job at that. We should have at least that much faith in our Heavenly Father to take care of us. So Jesus says here, don't, Take thought. Don't worry about those things. So I looked up the word worry. <coughs> Excuse me. I looked up the word worry. And for some, I, I don't remember seeing this definition because if I had seen this, uh, I, I'm sure I, I, it would have struck me as it did this time. So maybe they did some changes or something. I don't know. Or maybe I just never looked at this particular uh, uh, dictionary.com online. The definition of worry on dictionary.com, I believe it is, I know it was online, was this. Listen to this, definition of worry. To torment oneself with, to torment oneself with, or suffer from disturbing thoughts. When you are worrying, you are tormenting yourself with disturbing thoughts. You, dis you are tormenting yourself. I was talking to someone the other day and they were, oh, I'm praying against worry. I'm praying that the Lord will help me to not worry. You know, <laughs> Jesus said here, you take no thought. Matthew 6, he says, take no thought. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, he says, uh, uh, be careful for nothing. He didn't say anything about binding or rebuking a devil, a demon, or anything else, taking authority over the powers of darkness, and none of that. You know, he said, you stop thinking that way. Okay, you stop being anxious and thinking the way you're thinking. What you have to do is replace all those tormenting, disturbing thoughts with positive thoughts. That's all you got to do. Start thinking differently. One of the things to do is this. Do what the, do what the children of Israel should have done. Here they are in the wilderness, Exodus 16, they have no food. All they needed to do is remember just one of the miracles that God did to deliver them from Egypt, the plagues, whatever, the Red Sea, just one of those. Remember one, remember two of the things that God did. And in remembering what God had done, remembering what he did for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, remembering whatever, something should have given them a peace of mind that God can and will help them in this situation. But instead of remembering, man, we were at the Red Sea, 
Pharaoh was coming to get us, to kill us, take us back to Egypt, whatever, and all that. We didn't have no, no place to go, nowhere to run. And God divided the Red Sea and we went across on dry ground. You mean all that water was on that ground all those years and time, whatever, and the, water, the ground was dry? If they would have thought about that, why would you sit down and worry? Why would you be worried, tormenting yourself with disturbing thoughts about dying of hunger? And then after they had no food in Exodus 16, Exodus 17, well, they had no water. Now, wait a minute. The same Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, their provider, who sent manna from heaven and meat and the quails came into the camp. And all, if they just would have thought, remembered the, the, the manna, which they were still receiving, okay, and the meat, and just remember what God had done. You know what? All the worry would have ceased. And instead of worrying, they would have relaxed, sat down, stopped giving God the sacrifice of praise and all that. And here would have come some water. It may not have had to come from a rock. Who knows? I don't know how it would have come. But we didn't have to go through all that. When Moses has to go to God and all the people of it and all that, they're murmuring, complaining. Guess what? Ended up in the wilderness 40 years. But here's the thing. Changing the way they think. Instead of tormenting yourself with disturbing thoughts, tormenting yourself, because you have a choice of what you're going to think. We have an adversary, the devil. He can't read your mind. He does not know everything. I don't have time to prove that to you in scripture. But what he can do, he gets messages into your mind. Sometimes people think that the devil can read their mind because he has a way of putting thoughts and things in your mind. Well, he can get it in there, but he doesn't know what else you're thinking. Okay. <clears throat> I tell you, I'll tell you how the, what the devil, how the devil knows what you're thinking when you start talking. He knows what you're thinking when you start talking. But until you start, start talking, he has no idea what you're thinking. Because see, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Psalms 19, 14. Because listen, the meditations of your heart, the things you think become the words of your mouth. So let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be acceptable. Because the meditations of your heart become the words of your mouth. So if the devil wants to know what you're thinking, all you have to do is listen to what you're saying because your thoughts become your words. But he can get things in there. I believe it's subliminal messages, okay? He has this way, through your subconscious. You don't actually hear it. Next thing you know, you're just thinking it. Through your subconscious. Now, what you do is this. You speak to that thought. You can't keep thinking that and talking at the same time. It's impossible. If I said to you, count to 10, and you start counting to 10, one, two, three, four, and I then say to you, okay, say your name. You're gonna, you have to stop thinking about the counting. You can't keep counting in your mind and say your name. You had to stop thinking about what you were doing counting to 10. In the same way, the devil puts a crazy, evil thought, it's gonna make you worry or whatever in your mind. Speak to it, rebuke it. You know, the Lord, speak the, speak the word, right? Like Jesus did. You overcome it. You fight spirit with spirit. The word is spirit. So you speak the word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all my needs. With his stripes, I'm healed. You speak the word. He's gone ahead of me to make the critical places straight. Whatever the word is, you speak the word to those thoughts and, and, and they, you overcome them. You stop thinking them. But you, you cannot continue to torment yourself. I wish I had more time with those, with those thoughts, okay? Worry, listen to that, T to torment oneself with disturbing thoughts. Why would you do that? And next thing you know, you got migraine headaches, you can't eat, your stomach is all upset. You don't need Tums. You need to change the way you think. Some people have practiced worrying to the point where it's, it's going to take a little more work. But if you start working at it, it can change. Some people, because their mother worried, their father, and they learned how to worry their grandmother worried that I've had people tell me this all of my family we're worriers well you keep doing that we I'm worried I'm gonna have a heart attack you're gonna worry yourself into a heart attack okay we're all worriers then we just okay so you're just gonna be satisfied with that you better you better overcome it you better change the way you think and start resisting that devil start resisting those thoughts and they'll flee Change this the same way you would change anything else. Don't just sit down. Well, we're, we're all warriors. Okay, well, keep doing that. Keep tormenting yourself. Listen, I don't know if I've said anything that would cause you to want Jesus as your Savior and Lord, but one thing I can tell you is this you need Jesus. 
When it's all said and done, he is the answer to every issue and, and area and problem in your life. Jesus is the thing that you've been looking for, seeking. Jesus is what you need. There, there, is, a, there is a void in your life that you have tried to fill with, with, with business deals. You've tried to fill it with getting married. You've tried to fill it with having children. You've tried to fill that void with success. And you know what? You've tried to fill that void with thrills. You're one of these thrill seekers. You've bungee jumped and you've, you've jumped out of airplanes and you've done all those things seeking thrills to fill the void. Jesus is the only thing. A relationship with God through Jesus Christ is the only thing that's going to fill that void. Not finding your father that you never knew or your mother who you never knew or finding your relatives and, and going to your family line. It's Jesus. So say this with me. Dear God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Come into my heart. Live inside of me. I ask you to fill me with your spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Ghost with the manifestation of speaking in other tongues. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you're saved, born again, and on your way to heaven. And if I don't see you in time, see you in eternity. Love you. I want to remind you, Jesus Christ came at you in my life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live.